What's up everyone? Make sure you check out the West West Network website at westwestnet.com. Here you can find amazing independent podcasts based in Aotearoa, covering everything from pop culture to mental health. Also, if you enjoy our content and want to support us, please consider clicking on the support button on the homepage of the website. We appreciate your patronage and look forward to delivering more thought-provoking and quality conversations. West West Show. You know when they had the the TV here, like when I did the fat chicken, it's hard to do if you're. It's hard to do if I'm by myself because it's hard to listen and fat chicken at the same time. Yeah, and it was good when 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 Joe was here doing the fat chicken because at least he didn't have to worry. Just yeah, say, Joe can look that up, like you know. <laughs> But yeah, man. Nah, I think the I'm gonna get the TV back in here. Anyway, because I think I think if it's the other podcast like empty out the clip, like you don't have to probably you don't have to you don't have to you don't have to listen. Eh? You can just fact check. Yeah, <laughs> or like um the sportscast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can pull up all the teams and stuff, team lists, so you know just read off that anyway. Mm, mm. <coughs> are, you, are you excited about the NFL season? I mean, NBA season coming up. Yeah, we're still in preseason. No? Yeah, I haven't, I haven't done enough. Um, yeah, I haven't done enough research to. It's been real busy, but um, I think the teams are pretty um evenly loaded and stacked this season. Mm. Like heaps of players have moved around. Um. Uh, Donovan Mitchell's gone to the East now. Is he with? Uh, Miami? No. No. Uh, Cleveland. Cavs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, like, they're looking pretty good. Yeah. And Utah's not because Gobert's gone as well. Yeah. yeah. He's gone to, they cleaned house. He's gone to Minnesota, but Minnesota are looking scary with Gobert in the middle. And and, and that um and that young guy, what was his name? The number one. Was he the number one pick? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. But, um, yeah, obviously, big news for my team, Celtics. Oh, yeah, what is the big news? Uh, the coach stunned, oh, suspended, right. or yeah, whatever for the season. So that's I'd say right. they probably uh, yeah, they'll they'll finish eighth. <laughs> Do you know what the story on on the background on that? Because it was kind of weird when it happened, and then but so apparently the he got suspended ages ago, but it wasn't publicly known until later on. So when they announced it, he was actually um, they really told him like four or five months earlier so i guess it was like he he, he, he already was suspended so i guess they're trying to plan what what to say because he can't just come out oh he's suspended for yeah. the whole season why because of the <laughs> he's going out with someone from the but it must be someone appalling eh? i was thinking because why would you spend them for that yeah that, well, it must be something bad eh? i don't know i mean just i've i forgot who his like actual partner was though but like I was like, it's man, long. yeah. I was just, like, man, <laughs> you deserve it to be suspended for cheating on her, <laughs> idiot. Like, what are you thinking, man? So, so it must be. I know. She, I, I reckon it's someone. It's a daughter of the owner or something like that. Eh? Yeah, who knows? Well, she must be married too. It must be some bad, bad shit going on. Maybe it was Tom Brady's wife, and that's why. Because <laughs> that's another one that's going on. Because they broke up, eh? I don't know. Uh, well, apparently they got the divorce lawyers in. So oh, right. I don't know, man. Because all I saw was crazy. Antonio Brown post that photo of him hugging her. <laughs> Straight after the... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Definitely won't be him. <laughs> Definitely won't be him, but... He's crazy, that guy. He's not playing, eh? He's not... He's not in the box, eh? Nah. Nah, nah, nah. But, I mean, uh, people have said for a long time he's, you know, has mental health issues. So... Uh, if he doesn't, if he hasn't been given given the help, you know, it's only so much people can expect from him. Mm. You know, same as Kanye. Like, <laughs> I think he hasn't had any help. So, like at the moment, he's just going full crazy. So, like wearing those t shirts and <laughs> all that stuff online. Look but, at that! Under two minutes, we just talked about three crazy dudes already: Antonio Brown, Kanye West, and Udoka. Yeah. <laughs> Tom Brady was, yeah. Tom Brady, yeah. 
But that, that's your team, eh? Is that still your team? <clears throat> you just follow Tom Brady around, eh? Yeah. Yeah, I... I, um... Yeah, NFL rosters have always been too big for me to kind of get involved in. And then there's college football as well. So it's just... It's, it's too much admin for me. Yeah. I'm just... Yeah, I've got my teams and my players and I just follow them. So, um, you know, Ash hates it. I've always been a Rodgers fan. <laughs> Therefore, by default, Packers, you know, like Steelers. Um, and then, yeah, just Brady. So, yeah, yeah. you know, he's at Tampa Bay. So, Yeah, my Steelers ain't doing too well. I think they've only won one game. Is it Trubisky? No. Yeah, he's gone now. He's injured. He's injured, but I think they're going to make um, uh, Pickett the starting guy. Um, but I don't know, he had a good game there, first game we played, but then I, don't, I didn't watch the last game. It's kind of hard when it's Monday and you have to go to work. Yeah. <laughs> Start at 5 a.m. here, eh? Like the games. Oh, on, before on Monday. before um, uh, Daylight Savings. Yeah. No, it's 6, six oh, now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I'm glad we got um, Labor Day, Labor Day Monday. Yeah. After next week. So I can watch one game at least. <laughs> and Christmas holidays. Yeah. But uh, nah, man. It's um, I'm excited. I'm excited for NBA season. I I never quite. F- I didn't really follow it last se- last season, and I probably know why because um, Portland Trailblazers was shit, and they just cleaned the house too and left Damian Lillard with no one, no one I recognized. So <laughs> I kind of left that team now. I'm going back to my old team. I used to support Miami Heat because you know they're pretty much up there. Yeah, I think they still got a good roster. Mm. They'll be good. Um, it'd be interesting to see how the Nets go with uh, Brick City. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this think, is gonna be his first whole <clears throat> season with them. Eh? I think he's more. I think. I think. Um, if he's just more of a facilitator, and well, you know, they don't expect too much from him offensively. I think he'll be a good fit. Yeah, good fit. But yeah. I thought it was, he'll be a good fit if Kyrie went. Yeah. Now well, they now they'll probably just use him as for for defense. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you have him defending, you know, taking less uh defensive energy out of Durant and uh Kyrie. So it mm. could work out in their favour. So it's so always talking about Ben Simmons, right? And that guy has been controversial, eh? Like a lot of a lot of fans hate him, Because eh? the way his attitude is he doesn't it, like he, like he doesn't care. Yeah. He's not. He's not a hard worker. Eh? He's just Australian, bro. I don't care. <laughs> like, what are the Americans like kicking off about? They're exactly the same. We think the same about Americans. They they just don't like him because he's Australian. Mm. Like you know, and that's just their that's just their um, personality. Like, Patty Mills is probably the same, but you know he works hard. So yeah, I don't know. See, it seems like um, Ben Simmons. You know, they they would always slag him up just like putting photos of girls and cars yeah. on his instagram and not working so yeah who knows who knows yeah, what yeah. the story is maybe he's not a hard worker <clears throat> i want to do um yeah i hope we can do uh before the nba season starts officially i hope we can do a sports cards podcast because i got i heard this um thing called um it's like a skin draft you heard of it so what you do is you draft the team so you take turns you see who's going to draft first second and third depending on how many people and you've got to draft a team, but you got to also say, because um, you get points for how many games they lose and how many games they win. So say a successful team like the OKC, right? You're going to say OKC losses. So the number of losses is your points. Oh, yeah. And if you say Golden State Warriors wins, the number of wins Golden State have for that mm. season, that's your points. And you add them all up at the end of the season. Oh, yeah. How many wins they have? Well, you know. Wins and losses, yeah. Yeah, so if you choose, say you choose losses for Golden State Warriors, then, you know, you're only going to get so many losses, which is not many. Mm. But, you know, you got to think who's going to get more losses <coughs> more, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get, I get, thought that was fun. Get Lando and Ash out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought we'd do that there, because I thought that would be fun there. Just like, like I would think, okay, C will be in the losses column. Yeah. I put Lakers in the losses column. You would? Yeah. See, see, when when because it's funny because that that game, what happens is that everyone's gonna go for the like, two extremes, right? Yeah. Until you get to the middle, and it's hard. Like New York Knicks. Come on, you don't even know. That's a hard one, eh? I think Lakers is a hard one. New York Knicks is a hard one. 
Yeah. Oh, all those teams, yeah, all those teams that were like towards uh, the bottom of the top eight, you know, it'll be hard to uh, dictate which way they go. But I think that they'll have a few players that you can say, oh, if they don't get rid of them, they'll be more one way or the other mm. or, you know, pick up another missing piece. Mm. <clears throat> and then the other thing was the the playing tournament and this new kid that's coming up from France, have you heard about him? It's massive. That Seven tall, three? That's, yeah, 18 years old. Mm. And can shoot the lights out and mm. play D. Man. And I heard LeBron James call him the alien. I think that's going to be his nickname, the alien. Mm. <laughs> He's still, um, yeah, he needs to grow into his body. He needs to lift some weight like uh, mm. Giannis because that dude's lanky. He just get, yeah. if he gets one bump and the ACL done or sure, whatever. Yeah. It's like the opposite of um, Zion. <laughs> 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 he needs to eat pies. Zion needs to stop eating. <laughs> See, where would you put um, Pelicans then in the win or loss? <clears throat> Story build. Because that, that's another hard one, I think. Because uh, Zion's back. And they've got um, my man, um, McCullum. Zion still hasn't even played a full NBA season. He hasn't, So he? he's still got to adjust, you know. Ball had it, you know, the Ball brothers, they, they had their seasons first to get under like I thought Lamelo had a good season last year he just got injured now but you know you've got to have that first season to 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 feel the difference between college and the NBA who did Charlotte pick up because didn't they pick up someone good to be with Melo can't remember because that's exciting to me yeah they've they've still got all their pieces they've still got Haywood they've still got Rozier uh PJ um I think they still got a few players but they need to get rid of a few to clear up some space. Like I think they they got a few missing pieces. I think at centre, they need to solidify that or someone on the wings. Because they they did make the play play-ins, eh? But they lost. I the think first. so. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, the big thing happened then. Uh, Golden State with the Jordan Poole getting punched. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah, and then Draymond's mom tried to say it wasn't a sucker punch. What? She she went on Twitter and tried to say it wasn't a sucker punch, <laughs> and then everyone just ripped her apart, so she deleted her account. <laughs> <laughs> that was a sucker punch, man. He man, he flew into that punch. Eh? I mean, that was, I saw it. He flew in like Superman and punched them. You know, <laughs> I don't even know why he did it. Still, don't even know why. Like I don't know because I saw the footage and you see Jordan Poole didn't say anything, so it must be probably said something before. Eh? And just got Draymond pissed off, and yeah. but then he pushed him, which Draymond Green came back and um, yeah. which I thought was kind of because now there's a lot of drama around how the team's gonna jail now with those two having that altercation, yeah. that that little, little skirmish that happened. But then it's like, and then the other thing was, oh, who's the guy that leaked it? Like, <laughs> I saw I saw Steve Kerr say that like you know once it got leaked, it just makes it worse. Like you know. They were dealing with it internally, but then once it got leaked, like now they got to talk to the media. And now everyone's, you know, Jordan's family, Draymond's family, like parents, all that are now involved where they could have kept it in house. Like, well, I agree to a certain extent, you know, if they were going to sort it out and keep it. But yeah, because it was TMZ, like it was like leaked footage. It's just like creating drama for no reason. Mm. But yeah, because I was listening to the. American Radio and um, they were talking about the whole thing, right? And they're saying the guy who they're talking about the guy who leaked it. I was like, he probably works for the organization, filmed it, and got offered heaps of money. To TMZ probably approached them, said, "Oh man, we'll offer you this much money, but probably heaps of money for him to go." So if he gets fired, it doesn't matter because he's rich anyway from that footage. <laughs> but man, what a! I think in this day and age, eh, like I don't know, maybe I would do that too. You know, if I didn't like what I saw, if you know, if German Green, because you think things like that happen in team sports, right? Like you heard, like when you watch the last dance and see how Michael Jordan um, punched Steve Curry, eh? and during, during practice, but it, you know, these things happen, eh? The the passion comes out, but then I don't know if that if if I I think in American sports this always happens, and it's just unfortunate that this got leaked. On video, that this is one of the rare cases where it did get leaked, but it always happens. I bet you it happens all the time. Man. Yeah, that's. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, some some desperate person 
Just leaked it. Probably needed some cash. Mm. It's just like social media, you know, just it's blown out of proportion. Probably happens all the time. I mean, pretty sure it does and just doesn't get leaked. And mm. what drama do, do they have against Golden State? Nothing's probably been a pretty boring preseason from a news perspective. So someone's probably just out there with their <laughs> camera, like waiting for some shit to happen and be like, oh, yeah, I've got that now. <laughs> it's like, okay, sweet. Because then now that's died down, like there's nothing, right? So. Mm. Someone's probably just bored. Well, you know, it's funny because Adoka, that's his name, he probably got happy that happened because now the spotlight's off him <laughs> and on Draymond Green. But then, you know, they, you talk, they, they talked about how, how like, um, what's going to happen? Is Draymond going to leave, go to Lakers? That was the t- rumor. Or is Jordan Paul going to leave as well? Like, what's his choice? What's his options now? Like should he leave? Should he go? Because the I think the Warriors don't want to <clears throat> let him go. I think the Warriors really invest in him. Mm. But they're worried now that the chemistry won't be there anymore. Nah, it'll be sorted. Yeah. They'll stay. I think when you I think when you've got a roster that's still this deep after winning last year, they could potentially go back to back this year. I think so. Clay's back. You know, they got Kaminga. I think uh, you know a few of the injured guys will be back. So they you know. Arguably, they may not have been at full strength in the last season, and they still won a champ championship. So, I don't think. Um, I think if they get another ship, Draymond, Draymond's on the back end, and Paul, if he got another ship, it's better for his um, better bargaining tool for him. Yeah, because you're right. If Draymond's on his back end, they need to look after the next generation. And Paul, I think Paul is one of them. Eh? The guys they want to build around Steph, I guess, so Steph and Clay. Um, <clears throat> the other team I looked at was um, LA Clippers because Kawhi's back and now they got John Wall eh? oh yeah that's right so that might be a that might be a good rivalry between them and LA Lakers eh? I know Ash doesn't like <coughs> the Clippers eh? he reckons LA belongs to one team only eh? but uh... <laughs> at the moment it's neither of them <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now I think I think um, actually I laughed when Pat Bev got dra- uh, got signed by the Lakers. I thought it was like the ultimate <laughs> foil for the team. But in all honesty, I think he's the I think he's a good piece for LeBron. Like they don't need a point they don't need a, a point guard like mm. Westbrook who's ball hungry and wants all the smoke. Like Pat Bev can facilitate great on D. Mm. I think that's the type of guy that LeBron and A D need. So yeah. <clears throat> I feel like uh if the Lakers don't get rid of Westbrook they're not gonna, they're not gonna get past the first round this yeah. uh, this season if they get rid of him. I think I think they could get a better piece and keep Patrick Beverly. Mm. And they got Schroeder as well. So oh, he's there. Now. Yeah, he didn't Shame take back. his he didn't take his massive deal. <laughs> he only got offered less. <laughs> so you know they got Schroeder. They got mm. Pat Bev. I, I think they're sorted in the guard point of view. And I cringe when I see Russell Westbrook, eh? Because you just remember him when he was dominant, eh? Back in the OKC. And you just feel sorry for him because he's not that guy anymore, eh? And you know, I feel like he's stuck, man. There's no... He, 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 didn't have, he didn't fit in, in the Wizards. And he doesn't even fit in LA Lakers now, you know? I think, uh, yeah. I mean, he, he was an explosive point guard. You know, he, he was uh, aggressive and he took it to the rim, you know, dunker. He was the guy who's massive dunks. As you're getting old and you can't dunk no more, like, you got to learn how to shoot. <laughs> you forgot to learn how to shoot. <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, it's got to be a confidence thing for him because he hasn't always been, like, super mud from three or, you know, pulling up, but it just seems to have gotten worse over age. Yeah, and that's why I cringe. And that's why, I, oh, man, retire, man, because don't... don't you know, don't, we don't want your legacy to go out like daddy. <laughs> Triple double king. <laughs> well, he should have retired after that season. Yeah. You know? But then that, mm. that was the, probably the quietest triple double record anyone's got out eh? You know what I mean? Like, if you're going to, like, that record, it's like unheard of since the last person he beat. You know, and that was back in the, what, 70s? Whoever had it last. But then it was quiet because he wasn't in a good team that won any championships. And it sort of it wasn't really a celebrated thing, eh? 
because there was plenty of other things to celebrate, I think. Yeah. I mean, I guess you could debate, like, if he wasn't on a good team, like, he literally did everything for that team. So, of course, he was going to get a triple-double. So, you know, he's passing, assisting to other people. All he has to do is get 10 points and 10 rebounds. It's like, <clears throat> if no one else is going to rebound, <laughs> he'll do it. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going I'm going to go halves with um, my mate at work with the um, league pass. Oh yeah, because you you can get two devices now. Yeah, I did that last season with. Them, oh right? yeah, and it's um cheaper, eh? I think I think this season is cheaper. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually i I signed up for it two weeks ago, and it was even cheaper. And then um, I tried to change my. This is an issue I had with them. I tried to change my uh, payment method, and then they're like, "Oh no, you have to unsubscribe and then try and subscribe and then purchase again." And I was like. Okay, sweet. So I did that, and then when I went to repurchase again, it was like an extra 150 bucks, and I was like, you change your price in one day. Like, why? Uh -huh. And it's just like customer help in America, so they would just, but they would answer every two days, and I was like, the fuck, man? <laughs> I was like, the price that you changed by 150 bucks. Like, why? That's all I want to know. And no one could tell me. They're like, it's a glitch. And I'm like, it's not a glitch, because if I click on it, that's what I'm going to get charged. Yeah. It was like 129 US and then when I went to resign, it was one ninety nine US like oh. in the space of a day. So I was like, told my mate, I was like, nah, bro, I ain't doing that. Yeah. I was like, they, unless you can get the cheap price for me again. I was like, they won't even help me out. Like they, oh, really? they can't explain. I had screenshots and everything. I was like, why is this price changed? It's one day. Just they just left me on scene. So did you have anyway? What's the <clears throat> higher price? Did you nah. have it? Nah. Oh, you just cancelled it? Yeah. Oh. I'm gonna go VIP box on them. <laughs> <laughs> just pirate it, man. It's funny because, man, because uh, when we moved house, like I took I took Sky off, but then I didn't bother to put it back on, mm. and I went back to VIP box. And I I was thinking why, because like, you get anything anyway, right, online, and you save all that money. It's just the convenience of it, eh? Mm. Like to have it on your big screen TV, don't have to plug your laptop in. Yeah, the HD thing the port and you know it's so much hassle so yeah. i realized that man when i pay the 40 bucks a month with the sky sky now mm. which i think is is good mm. you're paying extra just for just not have to plug in your laptop <laughs> yeah <laughs> and finding the thing on vip box but <clears throat> so i'm back on vip box just because of the fact i haven't got sky i've i haven't bothered putting the sky back on yeah and i'm just doing doing that I don't know, maybe because of rugby and on, and yeah. there's not much. Oh, NFL is easy to VIP that. But, uh, you know, man. So, Ireland. Man, that was a good trip, eh? I saw your stories and <coughs> that, saw your posts and all that. Yeah. So, so, you went, you pretty much went straight after the borders opened, no? Yeah, or yeah, I think, it's, I think it was about a month or so, or a couple of weeks, but, um, yeah, it was the end of August mm. when I went went there for two weeks and um yeah, just a lot of um a lot of whiskey, a lot of Guinness. Yeah. Man, they like to drink over there, man. It's hard to keep up. Have you been there before? <laughs> nah, first time, eh? So So whereabouts in Ireland was it? Um travelled around a little bit, um, flew into Dublin and then um my partner's sister was getting married, so uh she was marrying an Irishman. The wedding was probably about, um, probably about an hour out of Dublin, so it's just in a small, um, like in the countryside, mm. real cool place. And then um, spent some time in Galway, which is a um, bit of a tourist city, part of the I think it's the Connaught region. So there's like the four regions in in um, Ireland, which are the rugby teams. So you got Leicester, Munster, Connaught, and Ulster. Mm. Um, I think Bundy plays for Connard, eh? So, so we we were in Galway, going out to all the bars. They actually have like rugby. It's all rugby there as well. So just seeing all these posters of Bundy Aki around. Oh yeah, it's <laughs> funny, eh? Like he's it's like a um, just like here with the All Blacks, man. They they they're like big into their rugby. So it, it was literally like being in New Zealand. It was crazy, and um, the morning of the wedding, I was actually streaming the All Blacks Argentina game. And I think right. it was about half time, and I just turned off, and they were like, oh, what did you turn off for? And I was like, yeah, nah. I was like, we're going to lose Argentina for the first time at home. And they are like, oh, man, it's all right. And I was like, nah, let's go to the wedding now. I was like, let's just start drinking. 
<clears throat> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Because they they got smashed they that first game. Yeah. And then everyone was already giving me shit about Ireland winning the, you know, the hmm. series at back in New Zealand. Oh, so. yeah, yeah. That's right. You, yeah. you went there after that series. Happened, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I just keep going downhill for the All Blacks. <laughs> I was like, oh, we beat South Africa last week, though. <laughs> <laughs> that was the thing when I, um, when I was looking at the All Black season, you know, up until now. Like, it was a... a you consider... Kiwis would consider it a poor season. They did win the championship, though, the rugby championship, though, which was pretty lucky. But I, th- I thought that the the opponents they played and in, in order they played them at, it was like from the best to the worst sort of thing. Because Australia was last, and they were probably the last, the least of the opponents that are up there. But I, I thought that even though we won the championship, the Q, uh, New Zealand won the championship, I thought that it didn't reflect on how we're going to go in the next World Cup. Because, because, let's face it, these three teams, South Africa, um, Australia, and Australia are not the Northern Hemisphere teams, which look to be real strong, eh? Mm. Especially France and even England, eh? To an extent. Well, yeah. I mean, we, we play England on the this tour, end of season tour, so um, we have to play, is it, we have to play one of the top hitters as well in the quarterfinals right I think mm. we'll end up playing is it like France or Ireland or South yeah. Africa is it any of them three yeah so um, automatically I, I don't know if World Rugby's got that right like but you shouldn't have potentially you know top five teams playing each other in the quarterfinals like that just it dilutes the final mm. you could have like a an outsider of the top five playing a top five and then this is going to get smoked but so yeah um but wouldn't that depend on the first if you come first in the pool <clears throat> yeah it's first and second right so top it's always the top two from each pool playoff so you got four pools yeah yeah top two so one plays two one plays two. Oh, across pools yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. across pools and then that way so um oh, i actually haven't looked at the pools this um to see who's in but um yeah, to your point, like, I but in in all honesty, though, I also can't remember the last time that there was a rugby championship where Argentina won, like where everyone at least won one game against each other, right? Mm. Like, I can't I can't remember the time when Australia won one against because they, did they beat South Africa? Yeah, yeah, can't yeah. remember that. Even Argent- Australia did. Yeah, and then Argentina beat Australia. Argentina beat us. So like, it, it, everyone lost, literally everyone lost at least two mm. like i've never normally it's like us in south africa out the front and argentina and australia whatever so well that's a good point because when it comes to world cup it's not about <coughs> points it's about winning or losing right yeah and and, and we only won because we had more points yeah and for us to lose to argentina or australia yeah whatever we're like what fourth at the moment but for for, for the best team or for the defending world champs to lose to australia like i feel like that means more but you know people aren't worried about that they're worried about us losing so yeah it's it's mm. in, it's interesting because we've because we've been successful for so long it doesn't matter if we're world champs or not we still have that aura so it's a bigger deal yeah. and i get it <clears throat> but at the same time it's like south africa are losing to these teams like does anyone not care like they didn't they didn't win the last world cup by fluke they they deserve to win. So they're, they are a good team. So this is interesting. You know, everyone just puts the shits on us. So, you know, you've been a, a Chiefs fan because yeah. you're from there. And, you know, your, your coach, your foster, oh. <laughs> he's, man, he's been shit all over from New Zealand, man. And I think the win with um, the championship helped him a little bit, you know, <clears throat> take some, some pressure off, you know. But, man, he was getting heaps of shit, eh? Especially with the island. Mm. Everybody wanted his head and his. And the selections and that, but I know how, how do you feel about 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 Foster um, and what he's done. I don't I don't know if any coach would have selected differently, um, but it's hard to say. You know, you've got people who want some of those Crusaders players in. Um, what I th- what I think is that since the last World Cup we haven't had a firm backline, you know. Goodhue's been injured, Albie's been injured, 
our starting midfield been injured. Got got a fullback at second five, Haveli. He's a fullback, right? We're doing that. Atias can't get a look in. <laughs> can't get a look into a fullback. <laughs> and then when that fullback's injured, we get another fullback into 12. Mm. I'm not saying Jordy started as a 12 and mm. he played great, but I think since Hansen's left, I think we've had too many, uh, n- not enough specialist players in their positions. Like if you look at the Northern Hemisphere teams, right, they don't have utility backs playing in all over the back line. Oh, they don't? Oh, well, Bundy's yeah. a centre, right? Yeah. Lowe's a wing. Like mm. They've got Sexton's a, been a 10 his whole career. You know, <clears throat> it's debatable whether Bodie's a 10 or a 15, but all of these teams have kept players in their position and they've allowed them to lose and then grow, right? So I just feel like we've had a lack, a huge lack of uh, players. Um, you know, number six being a, a con. We've got Frizzell back at. <laughs> You know, yeah. like we, we've legit had no people where they are. Like I still see yeah. Savia as a seven. He's not, he's, he's, he's not a Kieran Reed size eight. Our Lucy's were the shit when we had an eight as an eight, seven as a seven, six as a six, you know? So I, I just think our issue has been, we haven't stuck with players in natural positions. Chuck your utilities on the bench. That, that, that's just what I think. And so I think that's where some of the issues have been. Scott Barrett, lock six. No issues with that as a as a on the bench, but where is he? Like one one day he's a four, the next day he's starting as a six. Like for me, I just feel like that's confusing for a player, and and um you've got to have that skill set and be good at that skill set to contribute to the team the best you can. Mm. So and when you're swapping and changing all, every game, it's like you got to f- change your game plan or to change your yeah your exactly. skill set. You know, so uh, on the fly, Sexton <clears throat> Sexton never. Ch- Changes in another position when, when he's injured, he's off at 10. He he, he wouldn't slip back to 15. Brady can slip back to 15. I still think he's a world class 15. It's a great 10. I think he's the pace he's still got, but yeah, I just I just think he hasn't selected players in the right position. Um, could Robinson have done that? Probably, you know, he's done that with the Crusaders. So, yeah, look at the Crusaders team, they're all they, they don't really swap, <coughs> chop and change, eh? Because no. the other guy that it's consistent fullback for Crusaders is uh, Will Jordan, and he's always on the wing. Exactly. Maybe he's wasted there. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, in my mind, I feel like we've only ever really had one fullback who could switch to wing, and that was Ben Smith. Mm. He was a f- he was the fucking man. He could do it. You know, yeah. got a few other players that could do it in their time, but they went to centre. You know, Mills, Cullen, but I think Jordan's best at fullback. Um, if we've got Moanga starting at ten, do we need Jordy's boot? Chuck Jordan on at 15 but yeah it, it'll be interesting to see the team he selects for Japan I think he's saying that you know Perofeta RTS these guys that probably wouldn't have got a look in because yeah <laughs> he's wanted to get his dubs up uh he's got to do it um but yeah one thing that's really pissed me off is um you know uh Peter Gus I mean yeah, yeah. honestly man like is it is it to take him away from Fiji can't, oh, it has help to but, be. I can't help but think that, man. Oh honestly, no, you think about it because it is. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like you, you don't, you don't mm. fall to the back of the line with scoring a try and debut, right? Mm. Yeah. Well, you knock it on, but you score a try. Just cancel it out, so then you're back at square one. You're not. Mm. You, you don't even not make the match day twenty three. Like, <laughs> come on, Fozzie, man. And he's a chief, so hook a brother up. You know what? At least he's got a try because Perifetzo, fifty nine seconds. What the hell? <clears throat> <laughs> what was that all about? You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they got to change the rule to make it like five caps or something. Because <laughs> one cap, two caps, ten minutes here, five minutes, fifty seconds. Like, nah, mm. it's not on, man. Mm. You know, coming back to what you're saying about the the t- team selections and the u- utility, because that that was something that Graham Henry came up with. Eh? Like, I remember going back then when Graham Henry came on, it was always about utility backs and even that um that duo playmaker mm. role thing. You know, we yeah. have two first. Two first fives playing, eh? Whether we fall back mm-hmm. on number twelve or, which was kind of a thing for us. And I remember him in his interview saying, "It's good because you know we can slot in. We can have guys that can slot in anywhere, mm. you know, and there'll be advantage over other teams." But I think now, maybe that's not the case now. Eh? Like mm. how you saying other teams are just have, having specialist guys to do good at their job, and that's all you gotta worry about. Mm. I feel like like way back. There was one guy who probably like was the four guy as a utility. 
you might I feel like you might feel the same way. Like I, I saw a toy other. Like yeah. he was a utility, right? Younger saw black ever, or one of them. He was a utility. If he had a set, if he had a, a legit position, because he left the All Blacks when he was still in his early twenties, right? Like mm. gone because he couldn't nail a position. Yeah. And he had like I think that was when Martin Nonu was around, and Nonu could nail at least two positions, right? Mm. But they tried to put Toyava like from twelve to fifteen, right? Like, and that's yeah, yeah. he played ten once right, for yeah, Auckland. Exactly. So like, <laughs> that's not gonna it's not gonna cement your chances as being mm. like valuable, right? So. Um, yeah, I mean, other people might disagree with me, but I mean, for the past four years, we've had utilities playing and mm. we've been found out, right? Like, it might be the case that with, with, with Toyava, they probably forced them to be a utility. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. It's like, he's a special talent. We can't not have him in the squad. Mm. You're in the squad. You can go anywhere type mm. thing. Because <clears> when <throat> I think of good, solid utilities, I think of Issa Nathiwa. Cause man, that guy played everywhere, man. Ten, and he was good. He was good at all those back back mm. positions, bar number nine. But I think I don't think you can get any guy like that, or think of any guy like that. Maybe Ben Smith can play too, but mm. two positions. But I thought Jordy Barrett did a pretty good job. Yeah, he's played ten for us, twelve, fourteen, fifteen. Well, I like him at twelve. Uh, yeah, I thought he played real well. Mm. But yeah. It's it's hard because they need him for for his long distance kicks. Eh? They need him for his kicks. But if you take him off, who are you gonna have on? And what you, what do you lose out? Do you gain more attack at the back with Will Jordan? Mm. Like, yeah, but see, Will Jordan got shut down by Ireland, right? Was oh, he at that, fullback or wing? He played wing, but <laughs> yeah. See, you can't even gauge anything because no. we're not playing Ireland. You know, yeah. Ireland was the Best test for the All Blacks. Mm. I don't think these other teams were a test mm. to see where we we're going to be during the World Cup. But so uh, I'm hoping, you know, the this tour, we could see where they're at. You know, I mean, the same thing happened the year before the 2019 World Cup, right? Like that was when Ireland beat us mm. in Ireland, and did we have our top team? I think like we both had pretty top teams. There's only one time we didn't have our top team when they, we lost to USA. them in Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the World Cup, we fucking smoke them. So it could be the same thing, you know. They beat us this year and then next year we come up against them and spank them. But who knows? I just want to know where our confidence in first fives is when that left. Was it literally when Kara left? Like, Kara would always kick. So why can't Moanga always kick? Like, and, and I'm not saying don't put Geordie at fullback, but like, why, why does he need a kick? Like, when has our game plan ever been to just nudge over a 60 meter field goal like Carter very rarely did it right so I think I think it's like if Scott Robinson has that faith in Moanga to always be a 10 and always kick right because no one else at the Crusaders kicks so why don't the All Black selectors have that faith in Moanga mm. so I think he's a better kicker than um, than Bodie yeah but if he's 10 10's kick let our 10 kick like don't and then, uh, how many long distance kicks has Jordy done this season anyway? Like, not many, do they? They always just kick to touch, so. Yeah. Now, that's, uh, <clears throat> to be fair, it's not just kicking that that the Jordy can offer. He's a oh, big no. body, he's a big body. But I'm man. saying that that's his, yeah. that, that's what you hear there's the publicized reason that he's yeah, a, yeah, in yeah. the team is yeah. for his boot. But it's just yeah. like, chuck him in at 12, man. He was brutal at 12. Mm. Like, that's a, He's a, he's a good 12. He's like Sonny Bull. Mm. He's massive frame. He can offload. He can draw on defenders. Like, um, he reminds me of that guy from South Africa, the young dude that played here and then grew up and played for South Africa. Oh, yeah. Um, I forgot his name. Um, but he kicks those long ass mm. field goals, like from <laughs> half the field. <laughs> yeah. I forgot his name. Do you remember? Blonde guy. Oh, he was, um, he's got a big frame, too. But I'd be happy with. Um, Geordie at 12 for the World Cup. Yeah. Lock it in. <laughs> oh, you probably want RTSC. Eh? Nah, see, nah, I, I was one of the ones that called for RTS to have one year under his belt yeah. before going to the All Blacks. Maybe go to the All Blacks, but then be one be in the system so he can train and train with them and stuff like that mm. and come out next year. Because he, when he had the injury when he played for the Blues mm. and he was out for like five, six games, 
I think that was a real um, a step back in his uh, mm. in his development. COVID too didn't help. Mm. He wasn't able to, you know. So, but um, yeah, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see how they go. France are looking strong. Have you watched the the women's World Cup? Yeah, because that that's another one that. New Zealand has to redeem themselves because they lost the last three or something, eh? And mm. they're not they're not even the favourites, eh? Nah, it's so, England. Mm. And that's only because they just they were consistently playing those years we weren't playing, eh? Yeah. There's um I was there's a I think there's a two episode documentary on Neon I watched for on the Black Fans. Oh yeah. Um and basically during the the two years during COVID, the England team played fourteen games and we played none. Oh yeah, yeah. So then, when they played them at the end of last year, it was like fourteen games versus none. Hmm. Got smoked. They got smoked. <laughs> <laughs> but they've always played England in the in the finals at every World Cup. We've oh, won right. every World Cup, but they've always played England. So it's like your closest rival has continued playing, and you haven't. So, hmm. um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see what Wayne Smith and um, Ted can do, eh? Yeah, yeah. Because I think I saw, I heard Ruby Tui on the. Once you be, she'd have the interview. She was just saying how, how um, it was it was a big it was a big deal when they got Adam Smith, mm. and and you can see them in their frames too. They're they're more fitter. Yeah, and you know they're pretty pretty fast too. Yeah. It'll be yeah, it'll be interesting to um, that'd be a pretty cool final to go to if it was us versus England at Eden Park. Yeah, it was sold out eh, the Eden Park last week. Yeah, against Australia. Mm. Which was pretty cool. Everyone was saying they're just going for for Rita Ora, but, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> she didn't even like sing many songs in the end. I don't think. Did she? Oh, did, oh, did you go? Nah, nah. Um, <clears throat> so you know your trip. So yeah, how how was um? Because I saw you went to the um, Game of Thrones. Yeah. So what did they got there? Because that's when they filmed. They filmed Game of Thrones in Ireland. Eh? Yeah. So um, at that town you were at. Yeah. Oh. So that that was in Northern Ireland and in, uh, in Belfast. So oh, yeah. we went up. We we went up there the week before we came back. So, um, yeah, went up there for a couple of days and, um, just outside of Belfast for about thirty minutes drive. They mm. got the studios here, and um, right. our Uber driver was telling us that they would get probably about like six to eight thousand tourists a day going to that place Mm. um so yeah it's um probably similar to like what lord of the rings was for the waikato down there whatever with hobbiton and um yeah the the studio that they have is kind of like a weta type thing um had all of their um all of their special effects um it was massive like you walk in had the gift shop and all that stuff and then you walk in they do a little um video entry kind of telling you what you're going to go and see um just in front of this massive black curtain with a, a tv drops down um then they say um cool you're ready for the tour is about to begin um the tv lifts up and all this smoke comes out and then like a wooden gate opens up like the, the gate in the wall <laughs> going out to the wildlings and it's all the smoke comes out it's pretty buzzy and then you go through and it's just got the, all the exhibitions and stuff um it was pretty cool they had those like wildling giants like real um life-size massive um all their prosthetics so they had they had like um they had this glass um kind of like a casket and it had cersei laying in it it looked real um it just showed the quality of the prosthetics legit looked like her you could see like tear drops which is probably just like glue or whatever and like vein and cuts and stuff like it was buzzy man the the level of detail they have and had costumes all the sets and stuff um yeah it was real it was real cool man just because you know I, I watched game of thrones and it's been a while since i watched it so it just kind of brought back memories and yeah they had all the music and just all that stuff in it, it you know if you've gone to any of the like to the weather workshops or seen any of that stuff um it also kind of makes you um what made me like reflect and think far we're like just as good if not better than like the people that did all the work on game of thrones so um but yeah that was just kind of throwback to all the episodes and stuff like that so yeah it was buzzy man it was cool are you watching that new one, The House of Dragon? <coughs> I haven't started watching it. Are they like, filming that there? The House of Dragon? 
Was that when they're <sighs> doing that or somewhere else? Yeah, I don't know. But um, I think the first episode came out like the week before we left. So oh, right. I was just like, oh yeah, I'll watch it when I came back and then just never got around to it yeah, yet. So yeah. have you been watching it? Yeah, I've been watching that. It's, um, it's all, yeah, it's all right. It's, it's a lot of politics. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of story going on. Yeah. And we're up to episode eight now. And it's probably not, I'm gonna say it took took eight episodes to get where we are, and finally things are happening that are probably gonna end up to be what the story is about. Because there's a lot of back the, the uh, previous episodes were like uh, stories, but you don't know if that was gonna be the main story. You know what I mean? And then it changes, and then they get older, and then the, there's a ten year gap between episode three and four, and then they get different actors to play the older selves, so you, you get confused. That but but the story is all connected. And yeah, it's just it's it's, it's complex because there's there's a lot of scheming with different characters and and you got the royal family, the you know the stuff like that. But um, it's not like Game of Thrones where there's multiple stories happening at different places and they all converge at the end. Well, this one's like one story, like it's just it's just focused on this royal family, you know, the Targaryens of the of the dragons. And that, I think it's like twenty years before. Well, a hundred. I think it's hundred years before Game of Thrones, first episode of the Game of Thrones or something. Hundred, two hundred years or something like that. But um, you know, the Game of Thrones. You, you're a big fan of Game of Thrones, the TV series. Yeah. Were you one of those fans that hated the ending? Yeah. Because they they got a lot of share there. Yeah. A lot of disappointed uh, fans. Yeah, that whole last uh, season was a bit rushed. <laughs> it's a bit shit. Cause, cause we did you read any of the books? In George R. Martin's books? Nah, and I know that they they created a head like the the books aren't finished, so yeah. they you know they were they liaised with them, but like that it was also like you were they were going off script, so mm. what can you expect? Yeah, <coughs> because it was it was it was, it was it was it was funny because Game of Thrones was a big phenomenon around the world, right? And then after the end the episode, you just never heard anything <laughs> about it anymore. No one talked about it. Nothing on social media. You you just got the first reactions like, "What the hell? What happened? Too fast? Shit! This is shit!" And then over. No mention. No ads. No nothing. No one's talking about it. It was like this. It was like the fans were so disappointed, they just hated on it and forgot to want to erase it from their memories. Eh? And now, I think now with House of Dragon coming out, and because it's a prequel. They don't. We we won't have that problem with the ending because it's already written in the book, sort of thing. But um, yeah, it's it's funny because it's it's going alongside um Lord of the Rings because they got the Rings of Power um series on at the same time. And I haven't I haven't gone into that, but I watched the first. I did watch the first episode. And it was, was kind of boring. But um, you you get into that too, or no? Nah, really? nah, yeah, it's just so, yeah. Haven't really been catching up too much. I watched um, I watched that uh TV show Euphoria because I saw that Zendaya won the Emmy for that, and that's um that's pretty full on TV show. Yeah, it's pretty intense. <laughs> I heard about it. It's a, it's a drama, right? Yeah, yeah it's yeah. like a teenage drama thing. Yeah, mm. <clears throat> and she won an award. Oh, okay. Yeah, she got Best Actress or something. Uh-huh. I think it's got the Emmy for it, yeah. <clears throat> it's, um, yeah, it's like high school type thing, but all those high school shows, they're never like high school kids. They're actually old adults. And um, yeah, Barish is pretty deep with like drug and alcohol use and like mm. that sort of stuff. Just like, you know, typical American culture with that sort of thing. But yeah, it's yeah. pretty full on, eh? Because um, <clears throat> this is a spoiler alert, but in, in House of Dragon, the, the young princess... She, I think she's a teenager, mm. and then she has sex with the um her uncle, oh. and then it's like an incest thing, and then you're like, what the fuck? She's like young ass, you know. But she's really 24 years old, the actress. Yeah. Because <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, she's 24. Wow, oh, she looks like she's acting as a teenager. Back check, nah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's that kind of thing, eh? Mm. But uh, yeah, there's all of that shit <clears throat> that goes on. So, so where, where else did you go in the island? Did you did you visit you visit the um, the Guinness factory? Or nah, nah. So yeah, that, I think uh, I think that was in Dublin. So 
um yeah it was a it was a pretty pretty full-on trip like quite a bit of just traveling around to kind of hang out with my partner's family so yeah it was 11 days the wedding was kind of like over three days so that, oh, yeah. that didn't leave too much time like either side i think we landed like we landed on the wednesday and then it was the friday saturday sunday was the wedding and then yeah two days after we just spent with her sister and new husband and then it's the three days up in belfast so that was like the lot at the uh, game of thrones stuff hanging out with some of her family and then back to to dublin to um to leave just got to work on a few days for travel either side so yeah it wasn't it wasn't like a go to the islands and relax and yeah. have a cocktail type of vibe <laughs> it was yeah it was pretty full on so mm. but yeah it was nice to leave the country obviously haven't been able to leave for a couple of years yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah it was just it was um it was nice to not have to carry my mask everywhere as well right no restrictions over there so oh cool yeah, yeah it was mean even on the plane like oh, i still had to wear it on the planes oh, yeah. um yeah so the first flight was like 10 hours second flight was 13 hours so yeah it's pretty tough but obviously they let you take it off when you're like eating and drinking and stuff so mm. but keep it on in between so so you stop in dubai first or singapore uh singapore oh yeah yeah then singapore to frankfurt then Frankfurt, Dublin. Their the last flight was only two hours, All right. but the other ones were longer. So, yeah, it was, it was just yeah, it was like oh, I haven't done this in a while. Been yeah. on a plane and <laughs> see, so yeah, it, was, it was mean. Um, and uh, the the airports were smashed, absolutely busy. Like Singapore airport was buzzing, Frankfurt airport was buzzing, and then um, yeah, that, so because we still had the mask requirements here, so it was just nice going there, not having to oh. Oh, shit, right. where's my mask right. just to go to the supermarket and all that shit yeah. just nothing and then when we came back here I think it was a week later when Jacinda changed the rules so it was like didn't have to wear mask again for too long so I was like oh thank god did you have the the COVID test before you go or was that anything <clears throat> uh, nothing no departure nothing oh, no, yeah, nothing cool. going to the other airports no scanning or anything when we came <clears throat> back um, they just give you your rats take it on the first day fifth day that was it oh yeah yeah um and it's pretty much it's summer when you land in there over there. Yeah, it was going into the autumn, so it was pretty much the Kazel summer wasn't too bad. Like I think that the weekend before we left, it was like maybe eighteen or nineteen here, and then when we landed there, it was like pretty much the same. Mm. So yeah, it was all good. How's the um? How's the pubs <laughs> over there and stuff? Yeah, mean just uh, just small little um, you know, small little hole in the wall pubs and stuff like that. So <laughs> have you been around Europe? Uh, no. Um, yeah, so tiny little pubs, like this pub culture is massive over there. It's awesome, eh? Like we went to Belfast and visited, um, I think it was the oldest pub, the oldest bar and the oldest tavern in Belfast. It's just so much history over there, eh? Like mm. those uh, buildings are from like 18 whatever and well, the oldest building we've got here is like 1900 or something. So yeah, um, yeah it was we, like me and my partner, we did like a little bar crawl in, in Belfast so yeah they've got the oldest bar tavern and what I say pub so the difference was I think a, a tavern can only sell beer a pub could sell beer and wine or whatever mead and and then a um, bar could sell like spirits and stuff so like or oh. just the bar tavern and the pub all sell like different things that oh, they could sell okay. so yeah it was real buzzy but um yeah just just um seeing their culture and um mostly drank guinness but um because because i heard that if you drink guinness in ireland it's different to drink guinness the taste is different than anywhere else in the world yeah and this might need fat checking but like they they told me that they only brew guinness in ireland so it gets sent everywhere else this one tastes different i this heard it tastes shit yeah yeah by the time I, it gets there, yeah. Because like, honestly, I had Guinness here before, and I was like, "The fuck is this shit?" I'm like, yeah. "Fucking hell!" It's like Coca Pops, <laughs> milk gone r- off. <laughs> and over there, man, it was like so smooth, like yeah. kind of tasted like an espresso martini, not as coffeeish though. Mm. And um, they even had um zero percent over there. Of, you know how they got of, like zero percent Heineken of, of Guinness? Yeah, hey. it was buzzy. <laughs> if you wanted that taste, though. Mm. Mm. Um, but yeah, so <clears throat> it, yeah, it was it was good. They got a good, uh, good drinking culture over there. That's interesting about the difference between the bar tavern and pub. Yeah, because 
Next time I go to a tavern here, I'm going to say, hey, you know, special is yeah. there. <laughs> they probably don't even know, know the difference. Because, <laughs> that, yeah, that would have been the originators of all that kind of culture, eh? Yeah, yeah. So Pretty yeah. much, yeah. And, um, yeah, when we're in Belfast, we did this thing called a black cab tour. So um, they they take you round. So in, in Northern Ireland, they still got segregated um, areas. So like the Protestants and the Catholics. Mm. So that's where they had the the IRA, um, and basically Northern Ireland don't uh, they want to uh, remain part of the UK? UK, yeah. So they when we went to Northern Ireland, we needed pounds, and the rest oh, right. of Ireland was euros. Right. Um, but yeah, so the black cabbies they take you around all these historical sites. They show you where like just the Protestant areas are, where the Catholic areas are. There's a peace wall that runs through Northern Ireland. This massive wall just legit goes all the way through so we were like driving around this wall it's just got like graffiti and stuff all over it it's buzzy man so mm. like um they even had this wall that was um dedicated to people like nelson mandela like just gandhi all these people of different colors and cultures and and um about how they have had discrimination against them so um yeah that was pretty buzzy to see too like you know they uh, basically it, it, it wasn't just racism it was you know the i guess the religious discrimination as well and it's still prevalent there as well so mm. like we're asking the guy um you know what happens if uh so they still had like the slums or you know like basically the the um estate housing all that stuff and it would back on to that peace wall um but we said to the cabbie like oh so what happens when the younger generation grow up and they're a little bit more open or you know educated to not worry about that like what happens and he just said oh they still believe it or like you know so a protestant will still think like like a catholic whatever mm. or if they get out and go to like university they kind of yeah, see that they're not horrible people or anything like that. Mm. And um, I was like, oh, do they have schools where, you know, Protestants and Catholics might go? And yet they have, like, integrated schools. Um, but he said, oh, they're in areas where you've got to have, like, a million pounds. So it's, like, well, new suburbs yeah. where it's, like, Protestants and Catholics mm. next to each other. But, you know, you've, you've got to have the money for it. So it's buzzy, man. Like, it's... It, it, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, you know, like we think that things are bad here. So, you know, things are bad socially, you know, housing and all of those issues that we've faced through COVID, you know, it, it's the same everywhere around the world, man. And that place Galway we went to, which is like a tourist uh, city, when all the pubs and bars closed, it was like a, a long street, kind of like Queen Street. Every single shop front just was rammed, just full to the brim with people and sleeping bags i like i couldn't believe my eyes man oh, wow. it was just so heartbreaking so it's buzzy man to think you know us over this side of the world and you know we're getting hit with 18 dollar kg tomatoes <laughs> and all this shit and bro it's the same over there eh? like mm. it's it's buzzy and um it just it just makes you realize how small the world is mm. like it's blew my mind man mm. and that and that was i mean it was the end of the night too and i was pretty fucked so it probably helped didn't help i was just tripping out but yeah it's buzzy to see that <clears throat> that whole Protestant versus catholic thing in Ireland that's been going on for centuries eh? yeah and you know to hear you say that about the wall and what the cab driver was saying like it's sort of <clears> like the infrastructure is not there how how it is it doesn't it doesn't allow for them to sort out their the, the differences, you know what I mean? It's like the mm. when when you're born there and you grow up, yeah. You, you're like all you hear is the bad side of, mm. and that's what you think until you go out to university, you know. And yeah, it, it's like it, the problems still there. Mm. The the hate for each other is still there. Right? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. But you know how you said how you know we worried about stuff here in New Zealand and mm. go around the world. Man, the first time I experienced seeing that 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 sort of scene with people sleeping outside and that was in Hawaii and it was in town and I remember I had to catch a bus from town but back to Waikiki and it was like it was like not it was like nine o'clock at night and mm. man it was it was outside of Chinatown and I swear the whole street was littered with people sleeping just on and when I sat at the bus stop there was people sleeping around me 
it was crazy, man. I was like, it's like what? And the bus picked me up, man. I was, I was, I was looking out the window and all these people sleeping, just along um, street, just people on the side. It was, it was pretty sad. There's a big homeless problem there. And then yeah, you you wonder, man, we shouldn't complain. We're, <laughs> we're here, right? <laughs> But then, you know, <clears throat> it is bad for some families here, especially when you hear stories about those families sleeping in cars and that. Mm. Oh, yeah, like, not to take away from anyone struggling, but mm. I'm just, like, it's it's crazy when you see it's not just, like, a small country like us struggling. Like, it's it's happening everywhere. It's, like, you know, the the people who have the power, you know, why aren't they doing anything about it? That, that was more the point I was trying to make, you know. You've got all these people with all this money, they can solve all these issues, but they don't, right? Yeah, <clears throat> it's pretty shit. Yeah, yeah. So that that was um, uh, Galway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and so so, 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 what else was there at the on your trip? Yeah, to be honest, man, that was that was pretty much it. Eh? Like, um, as I said, that like we, we hardly spent more than two days any place. Like the the place that we stayed for the longest amount of time was at the the wedding venue. Yeah. yeah. So um, <clears throat> yeah, that was a pretty buzzy little place. Um, at legit like, I don't, have you been down to um Hobbiton, or have no. you watched Lord of the Rings? I've seen, I've seen that. Yeah. yeah, but a place legitimately looked like that. Like it could probably keep about eighty people, and it legit looked like like it was a massive farm. They had like a main building where like they had the reception and the after party. Then they had taxis on site where they could little like take you because it was a legit massive farm. You could walk there, mm. and they had all these little like yurts and huts and stuff where people stayed on site. And then they had a little chapel there as well. So, I mean, it was a little quirky little area, and um, like it was in a small town that just had like a gas station, a pub, <laughs> and I think a food store. Yeah. And um, the bride and husband they went to the pub first to pour a Guinness before their wedding like apparently that's a tradition so right. <laughs> that was pretty cool man just, well, we walked out to that little pub guy opened up just for us they had some football on the um, TV and then legit they just got to pour themselves a Guinness we all had a Guinness and then went yeah. went to the wedding <laughs> it's pretty buzzy man you know that um that because it's funny when you know Irish people was known for for their drinking culture and you know when you're in the island and you, and you, and you witness it where it comes from like is it anything like what? What's the bad side of it? It's it's easy because when you think about New Zealand, we have this culture of of binge drinking. You know, is, do you see any of that over there? With the amount of pubs they have and how it's accepted. It's like drinking is a thing. Eh? It's mm. it's part of life. Eh? Yeah. But it's that culture's not here. Mm. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I I mean, I think I think um, I think Ireland might be the same population as us. Um, but I was I I need I didn't go to any like big cities. I wasn't by like any student areas and like didn't go like clubbing. So you could probably go to your local RSA and just see the same culture. Like they may not binge drink, but they might drink every day. Like you know, mm. that might be the difference. So where I was going, to, like all the pubs and stuff, it could have just been regulars that were just drinking all the time. So um, yeah, I, like I didn't go to any like crazy nights out and couldn't see if there were like young people scrapping that couldn't handle their piss or anything like yeah. you know what we would win us down in the waterfront so um but like the guys i was drinking with like they yeah that i mean i just couldn't stomach guinness so i just switched to whiskey so i was i was easy to just smash whiskey but like they were drinking till like 3 a.m 4 a.m just smashing guinnesses and i'm like fuck man i can't do that like <laughs> guinness is like i get it but nah so but that's what i mean man like over there it's normal yeah well, it's not normal here. Oh. So, sort of thing. The, I think that there's a lot of opportunity for drinking, drinking to be banned here. Yeah. You know, with all the rules and all that we have here mm. to stop that happening. But you know, we we'll never see that over there. I guess mm. it's just a part of their society. Yeah. The oh. whole, whole pub culture. <clears throat> yeah, and I mean a lot, of, like a, a lot of the pubs where I was at, like the the older generation, like they'd be they'd be bouncing at like seven o'clock at night. Like they, they wouldn't, they'd, they'd probably be there from like two to seven and then they'll go out. So they'll, they'll be heading out. So like that, that would probably be like the, 
the switch over of the generation time. So, um, but yeah, I, yeah, I, I didn't go to any like crazy nights to, cause like we were mostly at the wedding. So that was like an isolated like area. So in a smaller town. So I, like I didn't, Galway would have been the only place. And um, yeah, that was, that was pretty busy, but like, I can't remember seeing any like scraps or anything. Yeah. No fights, but <laughs> <coughs> so you're back now. You're back and uh, you, you're back on the on the training thing. You still doing your your, your marathon marathon training? <sighs> nah, was... nah, gave up on that. So <laughs> I think, uh, start of, start of the year, I had to do five half marathons. Like I had to do one every fortnight because it got delayed because of COVID. So I signed up last year with a mate who I did a marathon with the first marathon with, and um. That's when we were both working at AUT, and then I left, and then he like got another job as well, and I had him up. I was like, "Oh, so we are you ready for the first one?" And like, nothing. I was like, "Oh, fuck. see, I'll go around, <laughs> I'll go around the first one by myself." And then I got COVID, so then I had to do like three of them virtually, like just not go to the event. So, and then after I'd run like the three of them on the news, they're like, "Oh, don't exercise if you get COVID; it creates long COVID." I was mm-hmm. like, "Fuck, you could have told me that like." <laughs> Six weeks ago when I was running with COVID idiots. So like, yeah, that experience of running like one every fortnight with COVID, I was like, but I'm not running ever again. So done. <laughs> not running, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try register for that uh, IT heavy hitters. Yeah, so. man. We talked about that before we jumped on the mics. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, that's a, that's an interesting um, and a good cause, eh? That yeah, it's mental health. Oh, uh, no, suicide awareness. Suicide awareness, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, so I've never thrown a handbag in my life, bro, but I'll, I'll put them up and if I get knocked out, it's all good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably will get knocked out. I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, people that haven't boxed in their lives and they're, it's mostly corporate people in IT, mm. in the IT industry, so. Yeah. And and you get to train with, with real boxers <clears> for <throat> so many, so certain amount of time then leads up to the fight night. Mm. So, yeah, it'll be... And then and then Tana's gonna jump in as well. So hopefully I don't have to <laughs> see Tana on the other side of the <laughs> ring. Oh yeah, because you might yeah, you might have you might be on the same team and might not, eh? Like uh, hopefully we're on the same team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Red and blue, I think. Yeah. Cause, uh, cause <clears throat> I'm, I'm a, f- a friend of mine did it last I think last year. Yeah, he did it last year. Mm. And his the guy who's supposed to fight, he pulled out. So he had, he had a different guy on the, on the, on the day, mm. on the night. So it was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but he won though. So, was, mm. yeah. So looking forward to that. The boxing. Mm. <laughs> so, so what else have we been doing? <clears throat> um, yeah, not too much, man. It's just, it's just been busy with that, really. And um, yeah. Mostly, um, yeah, been busy with the like not so new job anymore. Like that's that's just really been keeping me busy. So, haven't been able to um, yeah, kick things back up in the podcasting yet. That was my first one in a long time. So yeah. it's good to get back on the tools. How's it um, feel? Yeah, it's good, man. <laughs> Invigorating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel the power coming back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been good, eh? So, just yeah, just life's been um. Just been uh, catching up, I guess, you know, with us kind of, with all restrictions gone now, you know, things are trying to get back to normality, Mm. I guess, and kind of figure out what that is, so. Yeah, because it has been that kind of year, eh? Like, Mm. you don't know what's going on. No one settled down. Yeah. You're settled down, but you're not. Yeah. Because it's like, a lot of things are happening. Everyone's changing jobs and (laughs) and getting... Getting different jobs and all that kind of stuff, but um, yeah, man, I'm looking forward to if you're gonna jump on the your podcast again. Mm. Success recipe, the success recipe. Yeah, I forgot the name for a minute. Now. <laughs> That's what you to say. <laughs> I still follow the uh, Instagram. Got to dust the cobwebs <laughs> off, eh? <laughs> so, so what's your plan now for that? What's gonna be the next step for success recipe? Are you gonna <laughs> do a to- totally different thing? Um. Yeah, still, still trying to figure that out. I think, um, I think, just to to kick things off first, you know, probably start getting in uh, back into the swing of it with um, the sports, sports um, podcast first. You know. Oh, I forgot to say, I I watched um, I watched wrestling on Sunday for the first time in ages. I watched uh, because it was the first Friday SmackDown. Oh yeah. Was, uh, 
the first season. Yeah. And uh, so um, I was Logan Paul. He, he showed up. Oh, yeah. And he was like, him and, uh, and Roman Reigns. Yeah. Like, I think they're going to have a fight. Yeah. In November. Or something. Yeah. I don't know what that event was. In uh, Saudi Arabia. Oh, from yeah. From Jewel. Uh, they just always get like a big name for Saudi. Mm. <laughs> Make more money. But man, that was that was some of the worst acting I've ever seen, man. Like, it's <laughs> cheesy, man. It's cheesy, man. It's so cheesy. I see that that or House of Dragons. <laughs> House of Dragons, but but the, um, before the SmackDown was the NXT. Oh yeah, that's uh, the training one. Eh? It's like the it's like uh, Baraka, the feeder. Oh, it's like the feeder because I was wondering that because I I saw. I saw NXT, WWF, mm. uh, WWE. Yeah. But then the stadium wasn't a big, massive stadium. It was just a little room. And I was yeah. like, hey, they've got downgraded. <laughs> they, they, uh, they try to give it a feel like old school where it wasn't, you know, right. packed out stadiums. So that that's the vibe they go for. But yeah, it's like the development. Oh, okay. So it's like you get your, get your development contract and then, you know, if you do really well in there, then you go up to the main mm. roster. Because the NRA player went in there, eh? Yeah. I forgot his name. The Samoan guy as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's basically like, it's basically what they call like, uh, you know, NCAA. It's like their version of college football or oh. college basketball. Oh, the wrestling. It's the feeder, yeah. <laughs> college wrestling. And then you and then you crack it in the NFL. Crack it in the main one. <laughs> yeah. I brought that up because I know you're into wrestling. Mm. And, you know, you talked about having a wrestling podcast, which is pretty cool. Probably introduced that into one of the segments and sports sports podcast. Yeah. Since this is American sports podcast. Mm. Yeah, man, like it'll be cool. It'll be cool. I don't know do you know anyone else that's into that movie? Um I used to know a few people. I don't know if they're still into it. Like I don't watch it hard out. I am mostly just like same as NBA and that like just read read it on Bleach Report and then usually just try and watch WrestleMania and a few of the pay per views on VIP box. Yeah, <laughs> once a year. So they, I think they got their like four big pay per views, and then yeah, everything else. But like, bro, like Brock Lesnar just came back as well. Was he? Yeah. So, In WWE. Yeah, he just came back to Raw. Oh. So. See that uh, he's an interesting athlete, eh? Because you will go if he wants to go serious, you go to the UFC. <laughs> and then, well, Daniel Cormier was on WWE the other oh, day. Oh, was he? Yeah. So they're all crossing over now. Rousey's. In WWE as well, mm. she's the women's champ right now. So, oh, is she? I guess it's a good, um, good crossover. Yeah, it's sort of the same thing. Well, you for, get to... for UFC, they, they don't have to die anymore. There's no risk of death. <laughs> and for WWE, it's more mainstream audience, so it's mm. a win-win. Mm. They'll they'll pay the UFC athletes the same, if not more. They don't have to work as hard. Don't have to potentially die. So I think for them, it's just like. Yeah, I was waiting for Conor McGregor to show up there. Oh, in WWE. Yeah, it'd be awesome because of his, um, you know, his, uh, talk. his his trash talk. Even Adesanya, oh, yeah, yeah. his trash talk. Because mm. that's the kind of attributes you need yeah. to make a good character in wrestling. Isn't it? It's talk smack. Yeah, make people hate you. Yeah, I didn't really watch Roman Reigns until that day. I watched him on on Sunday, mm. so I didn't really know what he's all about. And then when I saw him. I couldn't get the rock out of my head when he was talking. You yeah. know? It's kinda like, oh He's a bit more serious than Rock though. Yeah. He's not funny at all. <laughs> nah. Nah nah. He doesn't have the charisma. Yeah. He's he's a little bit more serious and sarcastic, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, man. I think that's actually. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, I don't have anything else. <laughs> it's been good. <laughs> Just a yarn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. So what's happening in the next uh, couple of weeks? Just going to settle in again? Yeah. Um, oh, I've, um, have a, um, like a, a minor surgery on Monday. So Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, it's not surgery procedure. Just getting some varicose veins taken out. Oh, How's, how's that happen? What, how to get them? Yeah. Oh, it's like, it can, I think it's just hereditary. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah, so yeah. My, my old man had them. Oh, right. 
Right. So, and then I just started noticing them and <clears throat> a couple months ago, they said I had to wait a month until after I come back from my flight, mm-hmm. I guess, cause the, maybe the oxygen in your blood. Oh, okay. So, and then, yeah, so on Monday and then I think it's a couple of weeks to recover. So hopefully that happens quickly. So then I can register for the, oh, yeah, yeah. <coughs> the ITU headers. Cause what's the worst that can happen if you, if you just leave it? Ah, oh, very extreme. Like, Worst case scenario, probably lose a limb. Oh, really? Shit. Yeah. Mm. But that would be like if I left it until like old, 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 like 50, 60, well, not 50, 60 or 70. You know, if I left it for another 20 or so years. Oh, true. <clears throat> yeah. It's like yeah, yeah. Better get it done now. So I was like, oh, I'll just take it out now while I can mm. before I. Did your man have the same? Op- well, um. Oh, I think back in those days, I think they actually operated, but now I think they just inject some shit into my veins and they eventually die off or some oh, shit. Oh, really? Yeah, it's fuzzy. <laughs> They're like, you just come in, drive yourself in. We'll do this stuff. We'll put a like a like a um, sock on you. You leave the sock on and you will drive home. <laughs> They're like, leave it on for two weeks. All good. So, yeah, I should be recovering from that. Wonder what the injection is like? Something <sighs> gives Captain America or something? <laughs> I don't know. Incredible Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, get some powers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Adam, thanks for coming on, bro. Oh, good, man. Thanks for having me. All right, bye.